Hello, men and women of God. Welcome to the Jordan's River podcast. So this is the first podcast that I'm running, the first episode of the Jordan's River, of Jordan's River. You know, the idea came uh, actually yesterday for the name, and I really believe like it was the Lord. But this podcast, let me tell you guys the vision for this. This is going to be a chill laid back podcast where I'm going to talk about some really interesting topics that are on my heart and really my take on these things and I'm going to be taking uh, all my brothers and sisters onto the podcast as well so I really want you guys to give me feedback on Instagram give me feedback on TikTok give me feedback on YouTube comment down below and really let me know any questions and any other topics that you want me to discuss and I think this is going to be cool I want you guys to become a part of this family this community and start listening to these podcasts so Today, I'm um, with my brother Emmanuel. My what's brother, up, he's a he's an artist. He's a missionary. He's a man of God, traveling with wow. me for quite some time now, wow. like two years now. And we're right now in Tokyo, Japan. Nihon. But the topic that we're going to talk about is something that we've talked about a lot personally, yeah. but we haven't really talked about openly too too much. And a lot of you guys have seen on my Instagram where I talk about demonic music and how I actually had an encounter to where I believe I was in hell. And I saw uh, a group of like these creatures that looked like only what I could think were demons. Yeah. And it was like they're praying yeah. and doing these demonic tongues, right? And it sounded like some of the music that I hear today. And I know of people who make music who they pray in a demonic tongue. So... We're going to be talking a little bit about music and specifically people who are in Christ, in God, who seemingly are turning away to like secularism yeah. with their music. Man. And we're not going to be calling out any names <clears throat> no. during this podcast. No. And also we're going to give you two sides. We're not just going to say, hey, this is bad here. This is bad here. We're going to talk about, you know, maybe this right here is good maybe some of the things that they're doing is actually good that they're putting music out that can reach different types of people but we're going to talk about that for a little bit yeah. because it's been blowing up it's been blowing up recently yep yeah, yeah. so the first thing i want to talk about is actually what is your take emmanuel uh on seeing not only christian rappers but also worshipers who it seems like they're turning towards making secular music and Man. different things like that. My take on that, can I, I'm gonna just be straightforward. Like, is for me when I see it, it it grieves me. Right, just this morning, like I woke up and the Lord, the, I, I don't always go on Instagram, but the yeah. Lord, like sometimes I wake up and the Lord's like leading me there. I just be following the Lord, and open up Instagram and I see a video and I'm like, okay. And I scroll past it. And I felt like later, after that, I felt like the Lord was saying to, like, I was supposed to watch that thing, mm -hmm. but I didn't. But later in the day, later in the day, that same video popped up, someone showed it to me. And I'm seeing that this person is choosing now to go down that path. And I'm like, what in the world? Right? Yeah. It's, a, it's like, it's like a lot of people, they love the Lord, they get on fire, they get set, but it's like the foundation wasn't set in the relationship with God. Mm -hmm. And so it's like once they get exalted, once they come to that place, it's like the the weaknesses, the holes, the tears, all those things start to to like to be seen openly, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's like that's why the Lord takes us yeah. on this process. And it's like when these people don't go through the process, they don't go through the system, they don't yes. go through that thing that God has set up. It's yes. like once they get exalted into that place of influence, they start to compromise. Yeah. They start to, you know, reveal some things that aren't necessarily good. Yeah. And because I know what the video you're talking about, I can kind of speak on it a little bit. Uh, when artists who are Christian, when they go and they start making secular music or they start dabbling into like being with secular people, I don't always necessarily say, hey, it's a terrible thing. But what I look at in anything and what honestly we all should be looking at is, hey, where's their heart in it? Mm -hmm. And the Bible says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So certain people, they might say, hey, we're going to start doing secular music. We're going to start doing this. And I might say, hey, OK, you might be doing secular music where you're not cussing, where you're talking about love or maybe relationships. It's not necessarily bad. No, but 
when I hear your reason for why you're doing it, yeah. it needs to be something that's glorifying yeah. God. Yeah. It needs to be something, uh, in my opinion, that is going to cause people to somehow encounter Jesus right. or somehow have a better life. That's true. Yeah. Because it's like music, music is very spiritual. Music is a spiritual thing. So true. And like Lucifer, the devil, the dude was like a musician. He led mm. worship. He was that guy in heaven. But we see like his fall, his his fall because yeah. the pride that entered his heart and his position and where he was in his mind. So it's like music is such a, an instrument today that that the devil really is using to influence people. Oh, yeah. And it's like whoever, when you're making music, it's like you have to be from the right spirit or else what spirit is upon this music? What spirit is behind mm -hmm. what's being played? It's like, for instance, like, when I first was saved, like I cut off, I cut off some music. I didn't listen to certain music. Oh yeah. And when I, um, before that, I, I listened to a lot of, you know, Juice World. I listened to a lot of artists, some other artists, and these people were a lot about depression, anxiety, oh yeah, all these issues. And long story short, those are the same things I was struggling with and dealing with in my life. Yeah. It's like I'm listening to this music. I'm struggling over and over, over depression, over anxiety, mm -hmm. and I don't know what the source is back then. <laughs> yeah, and people really need to pay attention to the words that are being said in the songs that yes, they're singing. Yes. Because the Bible tells you that life and death is in the power of the tongue, the tongue, and those who love it will eat the fruit of it. So before I was smoking dr drugs, before I was smoking weed, before I was popping Zans, before I was robbing people, I was rapping about doing all yeah, those things. Yeah. So I was speaking that over my life. Yeah. And the Bible talks about how the tongue is something that's so powerful, yet it's so small, and it guides and it directs your yep, life. Yep. So people think that it's nothing, that they're talking about being depressed and all this stuff. But what they're doing is inviting that thing yeah. <laughs> into their life. Yeah. So actually what I found out is that certain music is a form of witchcraft. Yes. Because it's manipulating yes. people to speak to things speak over their things. life to be controlled. Yep. And some of these witches, like when you see a witch, right? Witches really, really want power and mm -hmm. control over yep. people. Yep. And they want, because they have something in them, to be worshipped by man in some sort of way so what happens is a lot of these artists are actually witches yep. and warlocks yep. and they'll be talking about themselves so much and glorifying themselves so then now you're talking about them you're you're supporting man. them talk about themselves and now all of a sudden you're idolizing them so some christians have to watch out be careful. that they don't have that same seed because of things that happened in the past music that they made in the past because then they can eventually allow for that same like Id idolatry and lust to, to be worshipped or idolized to come yeah. into their life. Yeah, that's that's literally the same thing happened with the devil. Yeah, that's actually literally down to the dot. The dude's like, I'm gonna be like the Most High. <laughs> Got kicked out of heaven. They really want that same thing, that attention, and wow. that's why again, it's so important to go through that process. The Lord at wow. one point, <laughs> the Lord is calling me towards you know worship, towards music, and towards those things, creativity, art. And for a period of time, the Lord took me away from that. He didn't allow me to make music. Yeah. He didn't allow me to really paint or do anything. Yeah. And at one point, I was like, man, I really want to do these things. But every time I try to do it, I just didn't have peace. Yeah. But only recently, the Lord's allowed me to do this thing. But the Lord showed me that he was taking me through a process where it's like I was being delivered. I was My mm -hmm. mind was being renewed. I oh, was yeah. relying on God, believing God, trusting God. And the Lord released me now. Okay, now you're allowed to make music. Now you're yeah. allowed to sing for me now. And it's like, now when it's like, it's like, it's purely out of a love for God. Even as I said it, man, for the Holy Ghost, when I just said that, and, but it's, it's purely for God. It's purely for Jesus. It's none of me, but it's Christ. Like even the yeah. gift that he's given me. Yeah. That's not even me. That's God. Yeah. <laughs> it's God's grace. So it's like these, these artists, these people, they, they don't, they don't have that in them. Mm -hmm. So they, that lust, like you said, is in them. Yeah, I I remember, uh, I've said this a few times, but I had this dream. I had this dream, and this is for all those who want to do art, who want to do music, who God feels like is going to use them in a powerful way, even in other areas, and lift them up. 
So I had this dream and we're walking through this like mission and it was almost like we're yeah. in a video game like yeah. Call of Duty or something. Yeah. There's only a few guys with me yeah. and we're taking out the enemy and then we get to this room like after it seemed like we kind of finished. It was an armory room. There was guns, there was ammo. I'm like, oh, okay, praise God. And then we get out and we're in this huge gym like auditorium. It's another phase and all of the people in there, I knew for some reason that they're Christian. Mm. I don't know how I knew. Mm. And... Nah. They were all like using their gifts that God gave them. But it was like, I remember seeing some person making a music video and he wasn't saying any cuss words. It's funny that we're talking about the secular music because mm. he wasn't saying any cuss words, but it didn't sound like he was glorifying God and it wasn't anointed. And I was like, hmm, this is kind of interesting. And then boom, an alarm goes off and we knew it was like time for battle. Like it was time. Like we were being prepared. It was time. And everyone started coming to me. People started coming to me saying, Jordan, yo, where's the guns? Where's the ammo? <laughs> I look at them. I'm like, bro, why were you not with us in the process? Why were you not with us in the mission? Wow. Why were you not with us? Wow. So in the same way, a lot of people, they're not prepared for the battle that's going to happen when they begin to use their gift. Man. They just want to get into the playground and just start using their gift Man. beforehand. And that temptation will come to everyone who has gifts, everyone who's an artist. That temptation will come. Man, it's like you really have to pass the test. You do. You really have to pass the it's test. Facts. Because if you don't, man, that character, that thing that you think is, is tucked away is going to come up. Mm -hmm. The Bible says don't put any confidence in the flesh. Don't put any confidence no. in that thing. Because you thinking that, you know, that's not me. That's not me. And you get into that position, then you fall. It's so many great men of God who, you know, who got big. Yeah. But then they fell. You know, we all fall. But it's like, there's a process. There's a thing that God wants to take, them, take us on. And we skip the route. Then we don't get there, you know. And one thing I do want to say is like, even for all these people, we talk about it a lot, yeah. but people need to know for those who are going away from God, who it seems like they're going away from God, don't immediately judge these people. Yeah, no. Pray for them. Pray. I'm and don't you. speak about them. No. Don't really. It's not good to slander a name. No. I, it's no. really not. No. Because then it makes them feel worse. Yeah. It ruins a connection that might happen. But the best thing to do is to talk about the subject. Exactly. You know? There's this here, there's this here. Believe all things, believe that they're going to come and repent if they need to repent. But also, check your own heart and say, check, yeah. you know what? Maybe they know something I don't. Mm -hmm. Maybe they are doing this to glorify God. Yeah, believe the Maybe best. there is something that they're doing. Now, sometimes it's very obvious that yeah, that's not the that's case. Not the but case. you still want to pray for them. You don't want to to become a judge yeah. of these people. But so you do still want to talk about the matters. But usually it's best not to mention people's names. It's, it's usually best not to. Because yeah. even when you look at uh, David in the Bible and King Saul... He literally would not touch King Saul. He said, yeah. touch not my anointed. Do my prophets no harm. Bro. Yet King Saul was doing so much <laughs> that was wrong. He wouldn't even really speak bad. He didn't even speak bad about King Saul. Bro. So think about how much reverence he had. And that was from God, that reverence yeah. that he had. God gave him that reverence for him. So how much more so should we for our brothers who are saved, yeah. who are in Christ, who might err in different areas? And that's why even just men and women of God, don't immediately put your mouth on someone's no, name. That's not good. And you never know if they repented too, because right. then now you're speaking about you someone who repented. You about them already. <laughs> you're speaking about someone who repented. So then, I mean, we're not gonna have that grace when yeah. you know we yeah. have issues. Yeah. Everyone, everybody yeah. falls. And like, I'm, I'm praying for an artist right now. Yeah, who, I know exactly. Who, who seem to fell away, and yeah. and the Lord has showed me like. He wants. He's going to bring this person back. Amen. And there's there's a lot of things that God spoke to me for this person. Ooh. And imagine instead of man, that's the Holy Ghost. Imagine instead of the body of Christ praying for their brothers and sisters who yeah. fell, who fell into sin, who have ran away. Instead yeah. of praying for them, they're judging and pointing fingers. Yeah, that's imagine terrible, right? instead of you, instead of you pointing fingers, you pray for them, that you will see a, them quickly return to the Lord. Because of your prayers. Brother, look at how God saved our lives. Yeah. The fact that we got saved and how God deals with us when we fall into sin. The Bible says that love covers a multitude of sin. Yet Christians are so judgmental. Yet God, when he sees you fall, what does he do? He Man. comes and comforts you and loves you. And that's what brings you back to him. <laughs> so in the same way, the Bible it. says, be imitators of God Christ. as dear children. So then we should be loving the mess out of, out of these those people. people. We might tell them, yes, this is wrong here, but we're going to love the mess out of them. Yeah. We're going to pray for them. They're going to see our love more than they see us judging them. 
That's, and that's what will come to that's cause really to come gonna, back. Jesus literally says, yeah. you will know that you're my disciples mm. because of the love they have for one another. Yes. That's how we know we are Christian. That's yeah. how other people are going to see that you're a believer based off how much you love your brothers and sisters oh, yeah. and the people even in the world. Like, love right. is how we're going to be identified. The Lord, I want to share this, like, because you shared about that dream. Yeah. I also had a dream. The Lord spoke to me in a dream. Oh, yeah. I think I know. And he told me, son, this is like like a year and something ago now. It's been like almost a year and a half. He said, don't listen to this group anymore. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, what? <laughs> this, this, this group was pretty much my whole playlist. Like, yeah. I listened to these people pretty much and that's it. And God was like, no, stop. I was like, okay. And in the dream, I just, the Lord was revealing some things to me. I didn't understand at the time because I didn't really understand how to interpret dreams back then. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, okay, God, I'm just going to obey what you said. Yeah. And the Lord started to show me that there were some faults, there were some things that just wasn't, you know, correct, some things that were off that the world's starting to see now. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, man, okay, that's, what, that's why you said that. That's why you said that. But even when God was showing me that, he wasn't saying, hey, now go shame these people. Yeah. Go speak mm -hmm. bad about them. Go insult them. And now go tell your brothers and sisters to stop listening. No, he spoke to me. Yeah, exactly. He said, son, exactly. you don't listen to them. Yeah. He didn't say to me, now go tell Jordan to yeah. stop listening to this group. No, he yeah. said, you don't listen to them because yeah. there's some things God sees and knows about me that I'm going through. I'm going through yeah, a process. Exactly. And it's like, I'm not trying to bring a bondage on my brother or, or put something on my brother. And it's not even the Lord saying that. And that's where a lot of people err now in the faith is when they think that the convictions that God gave them to do things, they assume that it means, oh, this is evil, or right. this is bad, or this is for everyone. Right. The Lord told me when I first got saved, don't listen to this specific Christian artist. And I thought it was because he had pride, or mm -hmm. he has this, or that. But it's really God protecting me from things because I still had issues I was dealing with. Right. So sometimes when God gives you a conviction for certain things, you know, it's not for everybody. Right. But when you assume that it is, when you assume that, oh, you have this conviction uh, not to wear this thing that it means that everyone like this is just something bad <laughs> no god just don't want you to wear that because he's going to bring you somewhere where you can't be wearing that thing so really 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 allow god to set you free from mm. all religion mm -hmm. anything that you might put a bondage on someone else because yeah. the bible says that all things are lawful for us but not all things are good nope. and the bible also talks yep. about how we should keep our convictions our own and not put them upon someone else right so, right hallelujah well I'm going to keep it short for this first episode. Thank you, guys. I really want you guys to let me know what you think in the comments. You know, I don't want you to be comments. dropping names and all that stuff. Please but, don't. you know, start some <laughs> prayer chains. Start some yes. prayer chains. That'll if you want to drop names, drop names for prayer chains in the YouTube comments on my Instagram as well. And let's pray for some people. Let's yeah. actually, like, Literally love on them. Pray. Let's start a movement to love on some of the people we've seen kind of fall away. And yeah, because we, we do love them and we want to see them saved. Uh, I love you guys so much. Make sure you comment, like, and subscribe if you're on the YouTube. Like the podcast. I love you guys. Thank you, Emmanuel, for hopping on the first Glory to Jesus. podcast, the first it's an honor, Jordan's bro. River podcast. We love you guys and we will see you next time. Bye bye. I like your beanie, bro. I like your beanie, bro.